Next up, Jennifer Warner, Senior Editor at Mayo Clinic Global Business Solutions. Hello, so I work at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our first experiences with voice-enabled content and how that fits into our overall content strategy. So as you may know, Mayo Clinic's been around for a long time. Uh, over 150 years ago, we were founded with the principle that the needs of the patient come first. And that informs not only how we treat our patients, but also it drives our mission as health information providers. So trusted health information isn't of any use to anyone if you can't access it. So it's our job to adopt along the way. So as you can see here, voice and, and voice-enabled experiences are just the latest iteration of change that we've adapted to. We started out over 150 years ago with printed patient information, then we adapted to the internet with mayoclinic.org, and then when the mobile revolution came along, then we adapted to provide information on apps, and now we're providing information on conversational voice units as well. At each stage of this evolution, though, we consider these additive channels, and that means we don't disrupt or we don't get rid of the other ones, we consider them additive. So we still print books, we still have a website, we still print a newsletter. Oh, we've talked about some of these already today, so I'm gonna to touch on some of the ones that are particularly pertinent for us. Uh, it is faster and it's natural, particularly with medical terminology that we might be more comfortable speaking and saying aloud rather than spelling. Like I still can't spell diarrhea. I always have to look it up on auto check, even though I've been a medical writer for a long time. But that's something that you're more confident saying than speaking. And it's also accessible when your hands and eyes are not. And also if you're dealing with a disability, those are things we need to think about in terms of developing skills. So at Mayo Clinic, there was a lot of discussion about how and when we were going to enter the voice market. Here are a few of the reasons. I'll touch on a couple. One of the biggest, from my perspective as a content creator and provider, was that we wanted to learn how to optimize our existing trusted health information. We did not want to spin our wheels creating a one-off product that would have limited utility. We wanted to find a way we could optimize what we already have and create a user experience that was appropriate for voice. And we wanted to start small so we could apply those experiences to future processes. So in finding our voice in that, we wanted to have something that would appeal to uh, a, a broad public, provide trusted health information and trusted answers. So we decided to go narrow with our scope so we could go deep with our expertise. And we decided to use a, base, a skill called Mayo Clinic First Aid for Alexa so we could use, you know, leverage our existing first aid content from mayoclinic.org and optimize it for a voice delivery experience. So again, we went narrow with the scope so we could go deep with the expertise. And so this is a skill that helps us fulfill our mission of providing trusted health information to our users. It's something that provides information for everyday situations. But in-house, when we started this, we completed the process in about six months. And at that point, uh, over a year and a half ago, we knew we didn't have the skills to develop the skill in-house. So we, we had to share our expertise and seek out partnerships for areas where we lack the skills or expertise. So we worked with a developer to help us build out that skill. Um, one of the things, like I mentioned, we wanted to optimize the content for voice. So you can't just cut and paste content from the web or from any other printed source and expect it to sound good read aloud. So some of the things you have to think about is how is it summoned? So it's designed to fulfill a request or answer a question. So you have to think about the grammatical structure, how it's gonna sound spoken, and it has to provide high level information. You're not gonna try to go to the, a voice assistant if you're just wanting, if you want every treatment option for cancer. You're probably gonna go online for that. So you wanna think about what that is and who you're answering. This is an example of what it looks like to optimize voice content from a web-based source. So as you can see, it requires us to really condense that information. It has to be succinct and high level. Uh, that means no long bulleted lists of symptoms like this and no things like parenthetical explanations of complex terms because you cannot hear those, com those parentheses and other things like that. So there's a variety of things that you need to think about here. And this we achieve by a process of componentization of content. It helps us to break up our content into smaller, more digestible chunks of of information and that allows us also to make the content more intelligent because when you apply markup language to those skills, to those uh, components or as Amazon calls them concepts, then it becomes smart content and so you can rearrange those to, to fulfill a variety of needs and also helps if you have a master content model to help specify the relationships between those different components. So as we move to take our voice content to the next level, we're looking at using that smart content for not only voice delivery, but omni-channel delivery. So we're not, again, we're not creating a one-off that's only good on one platform. We're really thinking about how we can apply this content for omni-channel delivery. 
how we can scale those operations and reduce manual effort and provide a consistent user experience. Our job is to provide trusted health information for consumers by putting the needs of the patient first. And what our job is as these technology evolves is that we have to adapt to meet those needs so we can continue to fulfill that mission. Thank you.